Well, well, so far as South Africa is concerned, I don't think it really is that, 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 that different. At the end of the day, what marketing is about is creativity, and South Africa has a, an incredible um, um, talent store of, 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 of creative people, and the creative work here is outstanding. I mean, it's better than many parts of the developed world. So far as um, a part of South Africa is concerned, though, and so far as more or less the rest of Africa is concerned, I think it is a developing uh, part of the world, and therefore there are differences. So the characteristics of all developing countries of, of apply here, which is that people are moving up into a, a middle class, but there still is a very large rural community. There still is quite a challenged urban community, and so communications have to take account of that. They have to take account of the fact that internet penetration in this market is lower than average um, for, for, a, for, a, for a country of its, of its size and economic importance, for instance. <laughs> I think the simple answer to that is by not losing their self-confidence. You know, uh, there are two reactions to a recession, flight or fight. And you can run away, you can panic, you can cease to do the things you normally do. You can betray your brand values, if you like, in, in, in the pursuit of panicky short-term gain. And obviously, as you'd expect, we are very much in the camp that would urge brands to stand and fight. Now, it doesn't mean to say that the only answer is to, is to spend your way out of a recession. That's not the case. There are all sorts of smart ways in which you can get extra value out of media in a recession. There are innovative ways in which you can connect with consumers. Um, digital itself is a, is, is a fantastic opportunity because this is probably the first global recession which has coincided with a digital world which is sophisticated and, and which is capable of being utilized by brands. So in, in, in general the attitude is keep calm and try to ensure that as you emerge from the recession your share of voice versus your competitor is at least equal or preferably more because that in our experience proved by recessions going back to the point where they started to be recorded is the, is the real denominator of whether a brand emerged successfully competitively out of a recession or not. Well, social media in the States, where, where I'm based, is, is really coming of age now. Um, our digital influence practice, is, 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 as we call it, is one of our fastest, fastest growing. I don't think there's a single um, global CEO who isn't interested in social media. So it's, it's growing exponentially. Um, uh, but, I would say, it's still relatively in its infancy. There are all sorts of challenges. How do you measure it, for instance, and, and how do you attribute sales effect to it? These are fascinating areas. We're doing a lot of research and development in, the, in, in, in those zones. But it is certainly you know, true to say that the, 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 the social media is a fundamental part now of any brand's presentation strategy and, indeed, self-defense strategy. Um, but it is still in its infancy. We, we, we haven't actually fully worked out how to harness its power yet. I think it's hugely exciting. It's, it's one of those seminal moments in a, in a nation's uh, history. Uh, I lived through the Beijing Olympics when I was in China before I moved to the States, and I could see how the, the, the Olympics fanned national pride, but, but were also able to be used by uh, a government constructively in order to catalyze change. And I, I sense exactly the same thing here about the uh, FIFA World Cup, so you can see major infrastructural improvements and so on and so on. But at the end of the day, the, the impact of these events I think is primarily psychological. They are, they are big confidence boosters. They create a sense of unity, um, and uh, I think it's just a very apposite you know, timing for South Africa. Not only because of that, but because it represents, in a sense, a coming out of South Africa to the, to the, to the outside world, and a sense that it really can stand with, with head held and proud and, 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 and host an event of this size. And uh, you know, just have to go around the last week, as I have done, you sense a sort of huge enthusiasm. So I think you'll see a, a sense of consumer confidence emerging out of it, as well as personal confidence. What's next for us is, is carrying on doing the job that we, we try to do well, which is to push creativity at the, at the very heart of what we do. Our agency in South Africa is totally premised on, 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 on that belief, and as a result, is doing very well in the rest of the world also. I, I think that, that uh, there are new things. Uh, to, to, to my mind, there's a whole interesting new world emerging as a result of the digital revolution. Particularly, we can see it in the States and, and, and the UK, probably the most to digitally advanced markets, where um, communications is becoming less about just conventional campaigns, but much more about creating platforms, content platforms, which, which, which are in a sense are discipline neutral. 
So that to me is an exciting area and one which we're exploring. We're also looking at some interesting new um, specialisms. Um, we, we have Ogilvy Earth now, which is a practice built on sustainability, how to, how to market sustainably uh, in a way that isn't just greenwashing, but is deeply rooted in some broader economic benefit. We are very interested in the Islamic audiences in the world. We have a, a, a practice called Ogilvy Noor, which we're just in the process of launching, which is helping people under, understand how that group, which you know, in a few years' time will be about a, will be about a fifth, let's say, of the world's consumers, um, what their needs are as consumers. So we're continually trying to push the frontiers in terms of, of, of developing knowledge and understanding of, of, of specialist consumer sectors. You know, it's been through a rough time, uh, and the last 10 years, there's been a sense of loss of purpose, I think, in, 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 in the business. I call it almost a, an, an agnostic, you know, decade when people didn't really know what they, they, they believed in. And brands themselves, I, I think, suffered. You know, the 90s and the 80s before it was the great age of branding, and then in the last decade, I think people have rather lost their way in, so far as branding is concerned. So people have paid lip service to it, I'm not sure how deeply held some of the commitments are. But I think we're moving out of that period now, and I think there is an increasing optimism. Um, I think there is a, an understanding that brands are important belief systems, and that branding goes, goes beyond marketing. Branding is about a company in its entirety, what it believes in, what its values are, um, what its workforce feels about it, how it communicates itself to the outside world in all sorts of ways. So we can see that, I think, in a number of our clients as a, as a, as a movement, as a positive shift. Uh, and I think that's a very positive thing. Uh, so it gives me a lot of optimism that the, the industry is recovering its mojo and that they can look forward to the next decade with confidence. In this economic recession, there are some areas in the world which have survived really quite nicely, thank you. And, and I have to say, by the way, South Africa is one, is one of those, relatively speaking. Another would be Latin America, where Brazil has hardly been touched by the recession. Mexico has fared um, surprisingly well. Um, Russia has fared surprisingly well. Um, China, on the other hand, didn't do too well. And I think part of the reason is they came off a, a very high Olympics um, year. And the other reason is that the local clients have only ever known growth. So as soon as they're hit by something like this, their natural tendency is just to shut, shut, shut down. But already we can see China turning around. The two places that were hit most were, I would say, Western Europe, particularly Spain, um, maybe some other countries as well, like Italy, and the US. Um, and there, there you felt, you've really felt um, consumer spending ebbing away and as a result of course we, we have to respond and uh, our clients respond. So uh, that's where the epi two epicenters of the recession were. <laughs>